Well, I think that, that, that Sven, I just enjoyed his work. And I thought, gosh, this is adding, the way this is shot, I admired it, and I thought, well, gosh, this is worth, you know, studying and, and learning from. I think, when, especially when you're young, you, you learn from the established masters of the day, and, and he was one of my heroes. Uh, uh, but before that, when I was just becoming a documentary cameraman, I very much admired Guy Green and Jack Cardiff and Greg Toland and one or two others, you know, for their style of lighting, really, and the quality of the imagery. I did two pictures with Guy Green, and I met many times Jack Cardiff. I never worked with him, but met him socially. A very charming man and a great communicator. I think that's something else a cinematographer requires. Communication between the crew is very important to talk about what you want and, and how you're going to do it and so on. The opening scene of Great Expectations, it's um, an evening shot of a figure running silhouetted against the backlight on the water. Very dramatic image coming into silhouette here with the, just the backlight. Such a strong composition. Cross light now, we're in cross light, strong shadows. Well, I think just the imagery really, the, the way he's setting up a certain suspense with these cutaways to the trees moving in the wind. And then there's this shock when he's faced with the convict. And here, this, they're both lit with three-quarter backlight, which I was talking about earlier. Much stronger contrast on the convict. It brings up a lovely highlight and a little bit of fill light. You know, it's beautifully played. The images are so strong, you really feel for this boy what a shocking encounter this is and how scared he must be. The impact of the scene is what's going on with this boy who's terrified. And so the imagery the way it's lit sort of adds to the scene, you know, it sort of gives a bit more bite to it and wouldn't have worked so well for me if it'd been flat lit. David Lee in the years. He always he always had top flight cinematographers. And I can see a style in the way the light is handled. I think his photography was very dramatic. He wasn't afraid of the darkness, this scene of the woman walking um, in the storm, you know, and again it's it's three quarter backlight cross light, which with very little filler which is so effective and because they didn't have all the additional facilities that one has nowadays to create these effects. I think this opening sequence again is quite stunning and a very powerful impact. I should think it was studio, but I don't know for sure because it just looks so convincing. I mean, I'm looking at scenes now that I haven't looked at for many, many years. So if I'm approaching something, I don't kind of try and copy what Guy Green would have done uh, all those years ago. You just learn something from it and absorb it and think, oh, that was very effective. And, and you know, you, you see hundreds of films, don't you, over the years. And some images live with you and others you forget. But the thing is, whatever you're doing as a cinematographer, you've got to be original. You draw on all these things as, as a past knowledge which has built up a library of information, if you like. And this is interesting as we do this tracking shot that the figures in the foreground are all in, in silhouette, which adds to the depth of the scene. You see how they've kept the light off the foreground figure is a bit out of focus. So th there's a lovely tonal range in that shot. Well, he was first, first of all, a Technicolor technician and then became the cinematographer and he was the leading Technicolor cinematographer. He had a wonderful feel for colour. This is studio, yes, the painted backing. And here, look at that. I mean, the depth in that looks really, like that's all painted. Now, this was all done in the studio with a 150 amp arc as a key light, three-quarter backlight again, and all of this was painted. Some of it, I believe they used glass shots. I'm not sure whether this shot was a glass shot or not. A glass shot used, used to paint um, a scene on the glass and put the glass in front of the camera um, to form a map, to put in, you know, a background that didn't exist. Greg Tolan was one of the leading Hollywood cinematographers and, and this was Orson Welles' first movie. He was only in his early 20s. 
Now this film has deep focus in a lot of scenes, so they were shooting with a fairly wide-angle lens with a lot of light, but I mean, it's wonderful quality, isn't it? Wonderfully dramatic lighting. This is studio scene, of course, um, but just the whole contrast level and effective use of the camera, wonderful blacks. That is quite deep focus. Because she's sharp, he's sharp. The background's almost sharp. That is deep focus. It would have been something that they discussed beforehand. I say it would have needed a lot of light. It just works as a very powerful image to me. Well, I've always liked black and white. You know, I think black and white can be so powerful. I think colour sometimes can take away the drama unless it's used well. Thank you.